In this video I'm going to give an overview of file input and output in Java with streams and writers. There's no code in this video, but I do have two videos that follow this. Both videos, videos use file input stream and file output stream. One uses object input stream and object output stream. Another one uses print writer and Google's JSON library to write objects to JSON. So watch those if you want to have code, but this one's just going to be an overview and give us a bit of a level set. So when we want to write something to a destination in Java, there's several components at work. And a lot of these components work with each other, or they're kind of like a plug and play model you could think about. So let's consider a simple case. Let's say that we have a collection, maybe an array list or a vector or something like that, a collection of objects, and we want to write the objects natively to file. So in other words, we just want to say, hey, Java, store these objects in file and let me retrieve them as objects. In object-oriented programming, that makes a lot of sense to be able to persist objects and then retrieve them as objects instead of do all kinds of mapping or something like that. So for that, we need an object output stream to write the objects and an object input stream to read the objects. But we also have to tell them where to go. Could be to a file, could be to a network, could be just about anywhere. So we will attach the object output stream to a file output stream, and we'll attach an object input stream to a file input stream. So let's take these objects and we're going to send them over to the object output stream. The job of the object output stream is to take these objects and convert them to binary code, or essentially zeros and ones. And then it passes those zeros and ones to the file output stream. Now the file output stream doesn't really know or care what it's dealing with. It just knows that it's receiving some kind of data in binary format, and that it's going to write those to a file destination that's been provided to it, probably by Java IO file or java.nio.files, which can uh, represent a file on disk. So the file output stream takes these zeros and ones and writes them to a file. Now, uh, those are not necessarily going to be human readable. Look at a fi uh, file generated by a file output stream using uh, vehicle objects, and you can see some words that you understand, but a whole lot of things that just don't make sense or are not human readable. If we want something that's both human readable and machine readable, we'd want something like a JSON format like this, where this isn't necessarily a sentence or a paragraph or a story, but you can at least see the characters and you can understand that, okay, in the land of JSON, an array starts with a square bracket, an object starts with a curly, and then we have name value pairs that are separated by colons. Now for JSON, we'll still use that file output stream because we still need to write to a file, but we have a couple other things we're going to need to use. First of all, a print writer is typically used for writing character data or string data to a destination, and in this case we're connecting it with a file output stream. But what's a string data going to look like? Well, that's what the Google JSON library is for. Google JSON library will take a collection of objects, convert it to JSON, and then in our case we're providing that JSON, which is essentially text, to the print writer, and then the print writer provides that to the file output stream. Now the tricky thing is, is that computers always speak in, in languages of zeros and ones. So under the covers, it's still going to be a set of zeros and ones. However, when it's represented in a file, the zeros and ones are going to map to characters or letters that we can read. So the representation to us will be human readable indeed. So uh, who are the players here? Well, we'll see that, uh, you know, a couple things I talked through in the last slide, so I'll hit this in a bit fast forward. A stream is essentially writing data to a destination. It doesn't really care much about what the data is. It just says, okay, these are zeros and ones. I'm going to write them to a file, or maybe I'll take an object and convert them to uh, zeros and ones. Then a writer is writing text or character data to a stream, and the stream converts those to zeros and ones, but we still see the text. And in our case, we saw that was the print writer. And then we also know that JSON is what we can use to serialize and deserialize objects into a JSON format. Now, for reading data, we'll see that there are counterparts for all of those outputs. There's usually a similar class named input. So file output stream to read data, file input stream. Object output stream to read data, object input stream. It's a little bit different with the writers because the print writers for character, or a writer in general is for character data. Print writer is the one that we use to write to a file. And then reader is the hierarchy for reading data. But then there's also one called scanner, which is kind of an all-in-one uh, quick way to read text from a file if needed. Uh, so those, you know, those don't follow that same nomenclature of output and input. They're a little different naming, but same idea happens there. 
And we have some ancillary classes that we use as well. As well. So java.io.file, java.io.path, those have been with us since the early days of Java, and we can use that to represent a file on disk, its location, and its metadata. And we need that location and metadata to be able to write to or read from a file. Now, there is a newer library available, java.nio.files and java.nio.paths which does essentially the same function but in a bit more efficient way. Uh, they're, they're typically static methods, a little less typing needed to call those. So if we look at the hierarchy, yeah, fairly straightforward. We have output stream, which is dealing with the ones and zeros, filter output stream, file output stream, print stream, buffered output stream. Those are subclasses of that output stream uh, class. If we're dealing with character data, then we have the writer, print writer, string writer, buffered writer. Uh, so the, the buffered often means that it's reading things into memory at a pace uh, where our program is going to be able to continue going without any significant uh, waiting. Uh, so it's basically reading things in life. So those are common items to use. Now for input, again, we have a very similar hierarchy. Input stream is a superclass that has subclasses object input stream and file input stream and many others. Reader, used for character data. We have buffered reader, input stream reader, and many others. And then scanner, which is that kind of all-in-one uh, easy way to just open a file and read from it. I demonstrated uh, scanner several videos ago when I was talking about uh, reading inventory data from a file. So one interesting thing about writing to a file is this concept of serialization. So to serialize an object means to take an object and decompose it down to a more primitive type, either zeros and ones or a string that represents that object. That's called serialization. And the idea is that we can serialize an object to a file, convert it to zeros and ones, and then we can deserialize that object from the file. In other words, take those zeros and ones or take the text that's in the file and recreate an object out of it. So that's this concept called serialization and deserialization. A couple notes on that. First of all, uh, if we want a data class to be serializable, we have to implement an interface called serializable. And this is a really in interesting interface because it's what's called a marker interface. It's an interface that doesn't have any methods. So normally you implement an interface, you have to implement some of the methods, but in a, ser in a, a serializable or in a marker interface, there are no methods to implement. You're simply saying by implementing this interface, I'm giving this object permission to do something. And in this case, the do something is we're giving it permission to be serialized, which means its state is going to mean be maintained outside of the Java virtual machine. So let's take a look at serialization and deserialization. Uh, we have our collection in memory. We have something that does serialization. So it takes objects, decompose it to zeros and ones. There are many things that will do this, like the object output stream, the print writer with JSON that we saw earlier. But we even see this in network communications. If you have a distributed Java program, one that lives on multiple machines, typically it's going to take a data class, an object of a data class, serialize it and send it across the network, and then deserialize it on the other side of the network. So things like spring remoting do this. CORBA, COM, DCOM, RMI, remote method invocation, uh, a lot of the ways that we can, we can transfer data from uh, a, a JVM on one system to a JVM on another. So this concept goes back quite a ways. So we have our serializer, which is going to take these objects and convert them to zeros and ones, save those zeros and ones in, fi in a file. And as we saw in a previous animation, those zeros and ones could map to characters, in which case it's human readable, or they might not, in which case it's not human readable. So now we're persistent, even if the machine were to shut down. Could be a file, could be a queue, could be a network, could be a database, could be one of several things. So when we start the program up again and we want to read the data, we will have a deserializer take these zeros and ones, then convert them back into objects, and then make those objects available to our collection. So that's a look at file input and output in Java with streams and writers. A lot we can do with this, a lot of functionality we can do. So as always, I hope this video was helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.